Hi, welcome to another edition of the Daily Record High School Football Insider. This is the Division IV Region 13 final preview show. I'm sports editor Aaron Dorkson along with sports writer Mike Plant. Uh, before we get into the preview of the Norway versus Girard game, Mike, let's take a look back at uh, Norway's 34-19 win over Orville in the Wayne County Showdown that was played at Medina's Ken Duke Stadium Saturday. Yeah, Aaron, it was, uh, it was quite a setting and quite a football game. Um, it's not often that you see a Jason Haley coached defense in the Orville Red Riders get, uh, get chewed up like that for 34 points. Um, I really think there, you know, a few things that I, I noticed about the game, other than the great atmosphere, I was kind of hermetically sealed inside the vacuum in the press box and didn't realize how quite how loud it was until I got out. I know you were walking the sidelines with Andrew Vogel. Um, didn't realize quite how loud it was until I popped my head out there a couple of times and uh, it just sounded like a, you know, it was a great atmosphere, a lot of people, saw a lot of different jackets from around the county. But uh, the game itself uh, really lived up to its billing. Um, I think uh, a couple of things that I saw uh, from Norway and offensively, um, they were able to use some draw plays to counteract uh, the rush of Orville. I knew they, they knew that they were really going to get pressured uh, as they tried. Orville tried to keep quarterback Adam Wallace bottled up. Um, and then uh, a couple draw plays really worked well. John Zimmerly had 188 <coughs> yards on only eight carries and some, uh, some other big carries. And really, I think Norway's speed uh, kind of maybe surprised or Orville a little bit, but uh, they certainly matched Orville. Yeah, it was a huge win as far as respect for Norway. I don't know what the poll would have been. Maybe we should have taken one before the game, seeing area fans, who, who they would have picked to win. But it had to be the vast majority. Probably thought Orville. Uh, it varied on how close they thought the game would be. I know we were saying all along, hey, we, we think they're pretty evenly matched. You know, I wouldn't quite go with Norway going into it, but Norway a ton of respect, and they proved their team speed. I think their line did better than people would have maybe expected against Orville, although Orville's not a real big line. Right. Um, they, they just did an outstanding job, and Norway showed how many different playmakers they have. That's one thing I've liked about the team all year. I mean, they've had four or five different wide receivers. Uh, either the Zimmerly brothers at running back, Adam Wallace. I mean, that's seven different offensive playmakers. And then on defense, they have a ton of different guys that have stepped up. Uh, the Orville defense was only giving up 15.1 points a game coming into this. That that was one of the things maybe that people would have thought would tip the tides. And then Norwin goes out and scores 21 points in the second quarter. To me, the turning point really to the game was that drive for the touchdown right before the half where all of a sudden it was like, wow. You know, they had the draw play to uh, John Zimmerly. He went for about 60 yards and set up a touchdown, a ton of momentum. And then they came out in the second half and moved the ball. So ton of respect for Norway, and they're moving on. Yeah, and uh, we thought uh, Mason Monheim, um, the Orwayne, Nor or, uh, Orville's uh, outstanding linebacker, Played in the game with a separated shoulder, and uh, you could tell he wasn't quite the same uh, dominating force on either side of the ball. <clears throat> and I think that was the key because without Mason, Orville didn't have much of a running game other than quarterback Drew Brenner sprinting out. And then uh, defensively, you know, you got to give credit to Norway, and they really blocked him well. I know that uh, in our video that we had up on our site um, that Ben Lightshu took uh, Saturday night. On one big play that John Zimmerly had, you can see Monheim in the hole waiting on him, and then uh, somebody just came across and knocked him out of the way, and Zimmerly cut right off of that for a for a big gainer. And I think their defense they did a real good job keeping uh, Stuart Turner Jr. bottled up. They never let him get loose. Um, he did a lot of running <clears throat> east and west instead of north and south like you'd like to see him. And when they tried they tried to go to him continuously, and uh, you saw two, three guys on him every time. So, um, yeah, overall, I thought, uh, you know, Adam Wallace made some nice throws under pressure, and uh, the defense kept uh, kept their big, Orville's big playmakers uh, bottled up, and all of a sudden, they're in the regional final. Yeah, I mean, Norway kind of had a zone coverage to protect deep. They manned up on Turner. Never really, the plan was keep them contained, and Orville you know, maybe some people thought maybe should have tried to throw more underneath. Seemed like a lot of deep balls, and that kind of resulted in jump ball situations. And 
you know, for the most part, Norway knocked those down. As you mentioned, it's a shame that Mason Monheim had to be injured for this game. He had hurt it at the end of the LeBray game. Uh, Orville, they definitely kept that one quiet and understandably. I mean, you know, you wouldn't want the word to get out and you don't want to take away too much focus, but he's a he had a great career. I mean, they were trying to get in their third straight regional final or their third regional final, and uh, he played in about 48 games as a Red Rider. Some other great careers for seniors came to an end. Drew Brenner, Stuart Turner, Trevor White. So that's a kind of a recap of the Norway and Orville game. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll break down, give our th thoughts on the Gerard norway matchup to be played this Saturday. And welcome back. Mike, this is the time time of year where, I mean, we don't even need to be paid to go to these games. It's very exciting to go out to these. They're, it's, it doesn't happen every year in the area. You know, sometimes the teams end early, but Norway's the last last team standing. They're going to play Girard, both 11-1 and one teams in the Division Four Region 13 championship game at uh, Green's Info Cision Field. It's on uh, 77 North, heading past the airport. It should be an unbelievable matchup. And the, again, Norway coach Joe Harbour is saying that the opponent kind of reminds him of, of the Bobcats. It's a wide open, spread attack. Uh, this Girard team has put up even bigger numbers in some ways than Norway has. They're coached by Nick Cochran, a former Youngstown area standout at Girard, who actually went to Ohio State and then uh, played at Youngstown State quarterback, and they have an unbelievable quarterback in their own right, don't they, at Girard? Yeah, uh, Girard quarterback Dan Graziano is only 5'10", <clears throat> about 175 pounds, but uh, his numbers are even uh, better than Norway's quarterback Adam Wallace, if you can believe that. <clears throat> um, so far this season, Graziano has over 3,200 yards of total offense and has accounted for 38 touchdowns running and throwing. He's at over 1,500 yards rushing, and last week, incredibly, threw his first interception of the season. And that's in uh, close to 150 attempts, so it's not like they never throw the ball. So I think he has 22 touchdown passes, Aaron, and one interception. That's a, that's a pretty darn good ratio, no matter what league you're playing in. Uh, they also uh, have a running back. It's kind of a one-two punch. Graziano, as I said, is a 1,500-yard rusher, as is uh, running back Ahmad Eggleston, who has run for 1,524 yards, 28 touchdowns, and Eggleston is gaining 8.2 yards on every carry. Last week in their uh, big 56-14 win over Black River, in which uh, Gerard led 42-7 at the half, they took that 42-7 halftime lead, Aaron, with no drive of longer than five plays, and three of them were one-play drives. Two of those were long runs by Eggleston of 63 and 71 yards, and the third was a pass from Graziano to his favorite target, Alonzo Bird, who uh, has three touchdown receptions in the postseason. And I know i uh, just reading some comments uh, today by Nick Cochran. I have not quite uh, tracked him down yet. He's proving to be as elusive as Adam Wallace. But uh, he mentioned that he was really impressed with Norway and really thought they were a lot similar to them. And he, he thought that Norway's offense would be tough to handle. But they also have uh, a 285-pound lineman who's uh, up for all state honors and defensively um, their leading tackler is A.J. DeVore as a linebacker, averaging about 13 tackles a game. But uh, I think um, it'll be a great matchup, which is what you expect at this time of the year, Aaron. Um, you talked about how it gets exciting at this time of the year. When you get to the regional final, you know, you're only one step away from the final four, which then puts you one step away from playing for it all. So it's, it's almost a time where uh, teams start in the back of their mind, they're thinking, hmm, Fawcett Stadium or Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, which is where the Division Four championship game will be played. So, uh, you know, put, you know at, this, at this time of the season, both teams are going to be excited, but they can both, you know, see the end of the trail. Coming. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's, it's the Elite Eight. Uh, just this week, the state announced what the semifinal pairings will be. So Nor Norway and Girard already know that they'll play the winner 
of uh, Johnstown, Monroe, and Coshocton. So Which is you, a great matchup. Yeah, for you see that right there. You know, one thing I noticed is there's no parochial powerhouse in this division. So we were, we were talking, hey, Norwin may be able to go to have to play well, but you know, it's theirs for some team to take. There's no Youngstown Cardinal Mooney with eight Division One players or any anything like that. Uh, I've been out at. Norway this week to get some information on the senior class, have a story going in on the coaching staff, just who are these 30-something guys leading the record-setting team. Uh, to give you some updates on Norway, they now have 546 points on the season. That's the all-time record for the Wayne County League. They've been playing football more than 50 years. Adam Wallace, 45 total touchdowns, uh, 31 through the air, 14 on the ground. Pass for 2,162 yards. Uh, the Zimmerly brothers continue to build their numbers at running back. One thing uh, will be a key, John Zimmerly, who had the huge game um, against Orville, went out of that game uh, in early in the third quarter with a, with a knee contusion. I know he's been a little bit limited in practice this week. But the thing I see, Aaron, uh, if you look at keys to this game, one, I think uh, Norway has to control Eggleston on the ground. Um, if a team has success running the ball, they really don't have to go to page two of their playbook. They might be a wide open offense, but they're going to run Eggleston until Norway stops them. And then uh, second of all, I think they have to put points on the board. That's obvious, but um, against Orville, they answered Orville's first two scores with scores of their own and then went on and <coughs> scored about 27 points in a row, which kind of broke that game open. But at the, you know, at this level, when you get to this point, every team's uh, obvious, uh, is very good. You have to have great team speed, and you have to have a balanced offensive attack, I think. And Norway fits the bill in both cases. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen Gerard play, but I think sounds like the teams are even enough that again this week it'll come down to execution. You know, guys making the block like they did on Monheim to free up that run at the end of the first half, doing their assignments not making mistakes, making plays, which Norway once again proved they can do. So that'll wrap up this playoff edition of the Daily Record High School Football Insider. Thanks for watching. And make sure you uh, pick up Sunday's Daily Record. We're going to be out uh, again all over this game with a couple of photographers and uh, yours truly along with Aaron uh, writing from the press box there. So uh, if we don't see you Saturday night, uh, read about it in Sunday's Daily Record. Thanks.